Hello everyone and welcome back to This Day in History, our nightly journey through 366 days of history, where we take a look at not only the historical events that occurred on those days, interesting people that were born or died on those days, but the historical context and implications of those events. Um, we are rocking and rolling through the year. This is our 21st day of the year, so we're nowhere near done. Uh, but we're almost done with January, so um, we have a ways to go. So without any further ado, let's begin this day in history, January the 21st. And on this day in 1793, the age of 38 in Paris, Louis XVI, you've ever heard that phrase, I would lose my head if it wasn't attached to my own body? Well, on that day, Louis XVI lost his head because it was no longer attached to his own body. Louis XVI was executed by the French razor, the guillotine. Uh, this is part of the French Revolution. Uh, Part of the reason Louis XVI had gotten to this point, because for a while during the revolution he had tried to hold on to power, uh, was because he was indecisive. Um, he just made some horrible mistakes. Um, and this was a time in which this ideal of getting rid of a king especially in France, made some sense. Uh, the French helped the United States uh, win the American Revolution. Um, and some of the fervor in France was in part fueled by their association with that. Um, Louis the Sixteenth. um, is, I mean, the events that occur later in 1793 are terrifying. Uh, and it's known as the Reign of Terror. It began in the summer of 1793 and would continue until the summer of not 1794. Um, and, uh, the man that started it and was responsible for it uh, would meet the same fate himself. But Louis the Sixteenth on this day um, met the end uh, with the French guillotine. All right, let's look at some births that occurred on this day. On this day, in 1951, in New York City. Eric Holder was born. Uh, Eric Holder was the first African American Attorney General of the United States. He served during the administration of Barack Obama. He served in the Justice Department during the administration of Bill Clinton. Um, Holder um, is a very controversial figure uh, to some people uh, for actions he took as Attorney General. Um, he really, though, in retrospect, um, had some profound decisions. Um, he said that the Justice Department was not going to defend the Defense of Marriage Act as it was going through the court system, and that eventually led uh, to the Supreme Court de declaring that gay marriage was legal across the country. Um, that really enraged, uh, conservative critics of his. Um, he also, um, in their mind, did not produce enough documents in the Fast and Furious investigation. Uh, they saw his failure to prosecute in the IRS cases that made a lot of headway back in the Obama administration. The thing is, it, it's just, you've got to understand 
that he was Attorney General at a time uh, when there was a lot of overblown rhetoric on both sides. Um, and that continues uh, to this day. Uh, he is now um, a private attorney again uh, for a brief time. Uh, in 2019, uh, he was considering a run for president. Uh, he ultimately decided not to run. Um, he also um, is working uh, with former President Obama, who he's always been a close political ally of, uh, to eliminate gerrymandered districts, they feel, uh, that are a disadvantage uh, to Democrats. Uh, so he is still politically active, and you may not have seen the last of Eric Holder. Um, I imagine that um, any Democrat elected um, in a future administration uh, will consult uh, Mr. Holder for legal advice. Deaths that occurred on this day. In 1924, at the age of 53 in Moscow, Vladimir Lenin died. Uh... Vladimir Lenin um, was, of course, after the Russian Revolution and communism gained a firm control of Russia, uh, was the head of government. Uh, he established a cult of personality uh, that lasted from the time he seized power uh, until the time of the disillusionment of the um, USSR. Um, unlike Stalin, who had de-Stalinization, Vladimir Lenin's cult of personality lasted throughout. Um, and there's still, to some extent, a cult of personality around Vladimir Lenin for... I mean, you can go visit in Red Square in Moscow. You can go visit the mausoleum of Lenin and see his body on display. It's still there. Um, there have been attempts and talks of removing his body, uh, but he's still there. Um, he's still on display. Uh, he is a seminal figure in the 20th century. Uh, he led to the creation of a new political theory, Marxist-Leninism. Uh, he is seen as also just a terrible figure in history for what the Soviet Union was under him, what it became after he died. Uh, he's one of those figures that if you have to make a list of ten just seminal figures in history of all time. He has to be on the list. Uh, because for 40 years from the end of World War II to 1991 and even today, the United States and Russia could annihilate each other and the whole world with the press of a button. Now, he wasn't alive for the arms race. But his ideals and his theories, they tie back to that. Um, I think one particularly scary thing that is occurring uh, is that some young people are seeing his ideals and not taking them fully into context and see a hero. Uh, that is scary. Um, Vladimir Lenin, for anyone out there watching, was a bad guy. Nothing good about him at all. Terrible, terrible person. One of the worst figures in history. 
in addition to being on that top 10 list of seminal figures in history, he goes down on the list of top 10 villains in history. Awful person. With that said, I will see you all tomorrow. On Friday, we're going to do the impeachment roundup. Um, and based on today's uh, proceedings, it might be a long video. Uh, we're going to do a... Um, I probably will do a caucus update video on Saturday. I feel we've had some developments there uh, that need to be addressed. So we'll uh, play that by ear. Thank y'all, and I will see you tomorrow.